My name is Jim Thrift, and uh, I'm a parishioner at All Saints Church, and I don't have hardly any talents except sometimes cooking. Uh, I'm good at social events usually, but it depends. But today we're going to say pretty much with, with cooking and <clears throat> a slight history lesson. The history lesson will actually maybe make sense if I can connect the dots for you, or you can call my management team of Patty and Tip and they'll explain the rest of the story to you. But uh, <clears throat> we're going to do a demonstration on making gumbo, which is really a poor man's woman's stew. And, <clears throat> but before we get to the poor man's, it probably would help a bit to find out where this came from, because everybody's heard of Cajuns, and they know they hang around somewhere around New Orleans, southern Louisiana, uh, mostly in swamps, but a lot of them have come out of the swamps in the last few years. <clears throat> so, well, actually, it comes out of the French and Indian War, which that's what we call it in America. However, it isn't the French and Indian War, in England, it's called King George's War, and in international history, it's called the Seven Years' War, because it went from 1753 to 1760. In that war, the person's group who fired the first shot was a young captain later on to become quite famous, here anyway, and other parts of the world a little more infamous, and anyway, they were, this surveyor was out with a survey party of a number of soldiers, about 20, and had about 50 Indians with him. The, they bumped into a French military group of about 40. George Washington's group fired the first shot and started the French and Indian War in the colony. <clears throat> The, uh, the Indians with them didn't like the French because they were aligned with the Iroquois and the Mohawks. So they decided they'd kill everybody and scalp them. And that would force the French to a war with England in the United States, which is exactly what it did. George was forced to relinquish his commission two years after the battle. And the French put out a, a warrant for him and a wanted dead or alive. Uh, and so Washington was having trouble with the French at that time. But what they did is in Canada, they removed, they voluntarily asked all the French to leave because during that war, the English took over control of Canada. They also kept control of the United States because it wasn't even the revolution. That didn't even start until 1776. And Washington comes back into the play then. So what they did is the Canadians that were in Nova Scotia, which was commonly called that general area, was Arcadia. They asked after the war for all those French to sign an allegiance document with the British. Those ca Canadians who were Arcadians refused the British gave them three days, what they could carry, put them on ships and brought them to New Orleans. The French there shortened Arcadians to, I forget the word, Cajun. Cajun. Cajuns were not native to the United States. They were French who had intermarried, didn't get along with the British, and then they didn't even get along with the French. So they became very isolated and invented their own foods. Two of those that are the most famous are gumbo, which we're going to do today, and jambalaya. The only real technical difference between the two is normally jambalaya is made with fish, and normally gumbo is made with meat. However, that's sort of a little oversimplification because if you're a poor person living in a swampy area in near New Orleans, and if you've ever gone across Lake Pontchartrain, north of New Orleans, and seen that swamp, pretty much you'll cook anything that looks semi-edible. 
So if you catch a fish, you make gumbo out. You get a muskrat, you make gumbo. Basically, they're the same recipe, except, you know, we, we don't talk about that because they get about $8 a small cup in a restaurant for gumbo. So we don't usually talk about that it was something you hit, shot, caught, or it was on sale. All of those are still completely appropriate for today's market. So I'm going to show you a few things. The meat we're using today has nothing to do with the recipe because the stuff in the recipe was not on sale. However, the Italian sausage bulk was on sale. Let me see that my lovely assistant, Angela, what's Angela? There's a, a French sausage called Angela that you're supposed to use, but they didn't have any in the store. And the next best thing was Mexican chorizo. So I'm trying to keep with the tradition of whatever you got, that's what you put in. Now, we're not in muskrat season here on the Chesapeake right now, or else if I had one, not sure where they live, we could have put in some muskrat. In keeping with putting in whatever you have, I have some leftover barbecued chicken and I added some bacon. So I said, well, that goes. So we have already cooked all of these things. And in order to help your cholesterol level go up, we have saved all of the fat from the meat. Chorizo and bacon are great for fat. I mean, those of you that are over being young, might remember the ads with the Crisco bucket and the lady spooning out and saying, lard makes everything taste good. Of course, she had a heart attack. <laughs> In some things, it isn't what tastes good, it's what might not kill you. So, but this, 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 this roux, well, I have to make a roux. Now, actually, it sounds complex when you read the thing, it's R-O-U-X. Uh, it's also the Cajuns can't spell. And if you ever get a real Cajun, we had one uh, working on our team, uh, you have to get them to slow down and understand what they're saying. As a matter of fact, they, they speak a, a real broken English. I can figure out Italians easier than I can figure out a Cajun. But <laughs> they're fun people because they have nothing to lose because they still live in the swamp. So, Anyway, now we're going to start, and you'll also see I have my crock pot here. No one on the menu do you see crock pot, but this is Jim's typical cooking class that the crock pot is easier than getting a big pot because I don't like leaving stuff cooking on the stove for the hours you need, so the crock pot works. So. we have to do here is do the vegetables. These are the, uh, oh, you know, those table onion scallions. The recipe calls for these, but I don't know why. It calls for other onions, but it calls for these. So I don't know. So anyway, I'm just trying to do it. They call for red pepper. Well, I had two red peppers and one uh, uh, orange. So we're back to, I had no muskrat. So we have to go with what we've got. The other thing that we're going to uh, make the roux or really the gravy, it Everything, every cooking school I've taken, when you're making gravy or roux, they always tell you to use a whisk. Uh, I don't 
I use it with on stuff that's real thick, like flour. And unless you're way better than me, the problem is everything gets stuck inside the whip. So you'll see me when I do the roux that I'm going to use a spoon. And you have to be very careful when you add that to the, the fat. Okay, uh, now I've, I've got to read my little thing here and see if I'm doing everything. Okay, I've got to make the roux. Okay, next thing we're going to do is I've got the roux heating up over here. We're also adding three things to the pot that are not on the recipe. One is a little can of chopped green chilies. I think it just adds a little flavor. Another one is a small can of mushrooms. Now, if you want other stuff, that other stuff. But this works. Now, we didn't quite get all the chili out, so we're going to add a little wine to the can. Red wine. Okay, that's that. Right now, we're starting to add the flour to the fat. There's some story, but I can't remember about the fat hitting the fire. What's that one? Mean? No, we don't remember. Now, basically, any of you that have done any amount of cooking, you know that adding flour to anything thickens the recipe. It's what it does. <laughs> yeah, I lost my other thing. Okay, I'm stirring the vegetables. And then we're going to add more flour. According to the recipe, I have about not quite half a cup of fat. That really smells pretty good. Uh, but I'm at, you're supposed to add then about the equal amount of flour. But I do it very slow, but you end up with a big flour lump. <laughs> and why do they call this stuff roux? I have no idea. Uh, also, just a little background on the New Orleans cooking school. Uh, it's been there for, uh, I don't know, 50 years, 60 years, something like that. Anyway, uh, it's, uh, it's open to the public. You pay for the courses. And they had, the courses, most of them are two to four hours. But uh, I learned how to make bread pudding, pralines, gumbo. We're getting close here on this. The other thing that I've noticed when you add flour to make gravy, it actually, even though it may not look real thick like right now, it, it gets thick as it sits. I'll tell you that. So now we're going to stir the vegetables. We're going to, we have to cook the vegetables down, you know, make them whatever. And then we 
next thing I'm adding here, uh, I'm, I've got chicken broth, which will be going in. And it takes quite a bit. That's a box of it. And then this is the bouillon cubes, you know, little guys uh, you buy in the store. And I have some of those. And this is a uh, can of cream of chicken soup. And what this does, it'll add some flavor, but uh, it'll also add thickness. The uh, thing like the chicken soup, uh, if you have chicken bouillon sitting around, that works. But uh, in keeping with the Cajun theme, uh, I bought this can on sale uh, because it was a debt. So we uh, need a little moisture in here. Get everything out of the can. Now, there's no real order to this, so I'm going to put in uh, this liquid. And normally, you put the vegetables in next, but they're not cooked yet. <laughs> so, anyway, okay, um, it calls for garlic, so we're going to. I will buy very small containers of garlic. This will last me about three months. So there's the garlic. Okay. You'll notice on the recipe, it says uh, you can you you should add Joe's stuff seasoning. Joe's stuff is a proprietary seasoning sold only by the New Orleans Cooking School. There are, however, regional seasonings that are very, very close. This one here is called Pappy's. Pappy's is packaged and made in California, and you can get it in the Western states, but uh, that's about it. It's made in Fresno, actually. So we're going to put in some Pappy's. I'd say about a tablespoon. We may add more later. Back to the vegetables. What what was that spice that you put in? I didn't catch it. What it's was, not it's what? not the Joe's stuff. It's something else. Oh, uh, happy seasoning. Oh, you can get on the internet and buy Joe's stuff. Go in the New Orleans Cooking School, and uh, they'll sell you Joe's stuff. Uh, Joe's stuff is all over the South. I mean, New Orleans, Atlanta, but not up here. It's kind of up here. Uh, you're only allowed to season in Maryland with uh, what's it? Old Bay. Old, Old Bay, that's it. You're, you're restricted. There's licensing requirements. You're not allowed to use anything outside Maryland or in Maryland except Old Bay. But so did you? Old Bay, if you've got a metal tin, Keep it. They just went the plastic. You can now sell the metal tins in uh, antique shops. Thanks. The recipe also calls for one cup of uh, cooking oil. Uh, I, I use olive oil. I need a little bit of my uh, vegetables here. Uh, 
Now, in the order of doing things, it calls for one cup of flour. That's what this is. Don't put the flour in until you got everything in there. <laughs> if you do, you'll end up cooking the flour into a ball and making an inedible biscuit. The other major difference between gumbo and jambalaya, I already mentioned jambalaya, traditionally it's fish, and traditionally gumbo is meat. The other thing, which is probably as notable or more, traditionally jambalaya has the rice cooked in it. Gumbo, historically, is over the top of rice or no rice and just some sort of French bread or Italian bread used to dip it. And other than that, there ain't much difference here. <laughs> okay. Uh, this is it. They're all kind of glazed and everybody's coming together here. This is the first batch of vegetables. Here we're going with the onions and the celery. The other one was the other kind of onions. These are Bermuda red onions. I think they're far more flavorful. A little more oil. And we're going to let that batch of vegetables cook a bit. I want to show you something that's important on the meat. You want to almost overcook it. These pieces of meat are virtually dry. This is sausage, this is your chorizo. There's a definite reason why you want to cook the meat well. Number one, get the fat out of it so you can put it in the roux. <laughs> Number two is the meat won't absorb the flavors unless it's got all the oil on it. So, those are two reasons, or really the same reason. In any case, why you want to cook the meat. I wouldn't say you're overcooking it, but you want to make it so it's very well done. Uh, it, it's just it's not a big deal. It's just the way, it, it's the same principle as overcooking the meat or barbecuing it well when you make chili. The meat, the, if you make this right and the chili right, you shouldn't be able to tell real easy what ingredients are actually in it. Now, I know people that put fresh parsley in this nothing against that. Uh, I don't, but you could. Uh, I think the uh, using the celery tops, the leaves and everything, uh, that pretty much makes up for it. But, you know, I mean, if you, if, uh, if, remember, this is a four person's meal. So whatever you kind of have is okay to you. If you want to put carrots in it or broccoli or whatever, okay. you, uh, I don't know, potatoes, maybe. Uh, but I, I mean, but vegetables, yeah. I mean, I, I don't, I don't, nobody, you don't get arrested for making gumbo with carrots in it. Well, you could. So, around here, the only time you get arrested is when you don't use Old Bay. I always have a can of Old Bay handy in case we're inspected.
Now, the recipe says you can eat this in an hour. Well, if the people are back from hunting and they're hungry, you can eat it in an hour. I'm not going to. I think it's much better to cook it for maybe all day, cool it off, put it in the refrigerator, and don't eat any until tomorrow. A friend of mine, Bob Stewart, who entered the Texas Chili Contest every year, said this about chili. It's good on Monday, but it's great on Friday. So, you know, whatever. I, I think gumbo is that same way. It gets better as it sits. Put the pappy seasoning in. How much of it did you use? Well, I used about a tablespoon. I will most likely add more, but I'm going to do what Italian cooks do. I'm going to get everything in here, cook it for a couple hours, get a spoon out and taste it. If it doesn't taste right, I'm adding some. Uh, also, If it's real bland, I'm going with this. This is not Tabasco. This is not terribly spicy, but it is a nice hot sauce that is easy. To, you, know, you don't worry about, you know, three drops of Tabasco can make something simple pretty hot. But Cholula is, uh, is jalapeno, but it's not that hot. So I can add a few drops in an hour taste it. One of the problems with Italian cooking that I've always had trouble with, and I've taken numerous classes, is that Italians, in order to cook Italian food, you need to know what the end product tastes like. Because just following the recipe doesn't work. Because you have to taste it. Well, if you don't know what it's supposed to taste like, <laughs> it's pretty hard to know what he's supposed to add. <laughs> You gotta get grandma or mom to show you how to do it. Now, the one thing is I, I thought about these cooking classes and uh, that is, I think, kind of missing is all the cooking schools I've ever gone to, they cook something and then afterwards you get to eat it. Well, sorry. Uh, if we had, um, if we start back up the coffee hour, which I told Father Ken I'd rather attend the coffee hour than the service in the first place, but if we ever uh, get back to uh, having a coffee hour you know, and the cooking classes are close by or I freeze some, we could bring it with a bunch of spoons or something but i haven't haven't gotten there yet uh, 
Now my roux is kind of settling here. I'm going to have to. I, you don't put that in right yet. It, it's um, it's still a little thin, but I I don't want to make. I've done this and, and made the roux come out looking like sugar cookies or something. You, you, you don't want to do that. It smells better than the fat, and all it's got in it is flour. Mm. 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 If you ever want to see a partial story of the uh, uh, French and Indian War, watch uh, the last of the Mohegans. Uh, that was Mohegans were on the side actually of uh, the British. Uh, as you know, the Mohegans now and the Massa Pequots both have big casinos on the Long Island South. Uh, they got that, I guess, because they helped the British in the war. I'm right? not really sure about that part of the history. Okay, the vegetables are now done. All they are is you get them kind of, you know, crystalline, I guess you'd say. You know, they're just sort of, you break down the um, cells in it and you get the water kind of coming out, get them a little soft. That's the way it works. So they go in now. always cleans the kitchen because I'm a television rated chef. Uh, actually, the look I just got, maybe I'm not that high rated after all. Okay. Now, we're going to add the meat in. And you can see from this, uh, the uh, this is the uh, chorizo is nice and juicy. That's what you want here. Uh, your veterinarian would probably not recommend this for people with heart problems. Or if you don't have heart problems, this might help you to get up. I'll tell you one thing, this is a big batch of gumbo. <laughs> All right, now we got to add a little more, a little more chicken broth. Let's get this up here. You can kind of see, whoop, it's getting pretty thick. Well, thick, thicker. <laughs> now we're going to make it even thicker. We got a cup of flour. We're going to add this in here kind of slow. pot like this is good for, or a pot of food is good for, if you've got neighbors that invited you over for a nice dinner, you can repay them with this. They think this is great, and it's easy and cheap, which is what most of my neighbors are. <laughs> then we're going to put in the oil. Some of these ingredients, I have no idea why they're in here, but 
I didn't write the recipe, and I know this recipe works. Now, we're going to add the roux, which is, oh yeah. Wait, it sure smells good. You got to be very careful not to overheat the roux. If you boil it after the flour is in it, it separates and becomes really lumpy. And then for some reason, the flour won't go back in the solution. Yeah, don't ask, I don't know why. All right, now we're going to add this. Ah, this is great. And then we're going to do what Kathy would normally say at a time like this. Just put a lid on it. Didn't you say that, honey? I certainly will. <laughs> so uh, that's about it, unless I have questions or you want to drop by for a tasting. I have a question. What flavor did the poppy add? Did the what flavor? Add? Was it hot? Was it? It's a good question. And we'll have an answer here in a minute. Salt, spice, paprika, sugar, granulated garlic, granulated onion. So basically, Paprika, sugar, garlic, and onion. Thank you. No, nothing very deep. It's the choice of more retail meat professionals in the West Coast for the Santa Maria style tri tip beef barbecue. I don't know. It comes in little bitty things, you know, shakers, but uh, this is a professional pack. <laughs> Thank you. I mean, I didn't qualify, I just bought it. But Jim. now we've got this on high. We're going to leave this here virtually all day. Uh, tomorrow, I don't know, what is today? Today, Saturday, tomorrow, Sunday. Yeah, we'll probably have this tomorrow, probably either for a main course or a side dish. I don't know where. Mm -hmm. And uh, you'll see that I stay sort of with the recipe, but deviating. Not a problem. So does it ever, do you ever make it the same way twice in a row? I never made jello the same way twice in a row. <laughs> I thought so. <laughs> Again, remember a lot of these things that I actually specialize in are everyday meals. Mm -hmm. you know? So that, there are things, I make banana bread out of rotten bananas nobody wants. That's what I want. I mean, you know, so I don't, I, you know, I don't make things exactly the same. Uh, Italian cooking, <clears throat> well, I just had, I just made an eggplant casserole last week and I, I didn't have mozzarella. So I threw, you supposed to have mozzarella. I had Parmesan, but I had mozzarella. So all I did was substitute cheddar, had some people over, Nobody said this doesn't taste right. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I mean, I, I learned that substitutions, even on spices. I, I remember one time taking a cooking class and they said, well, you're supposed to have five spice. And I said, which five? No, no, they said, you buy it, it's got the five spices in it. Mm -hmm. well, well, okay, but I may have four of them, so why do I need another jar? <laughs> I mean, you know, just substitute stuff, you know, and, uh, you know, you, you, I try to cook for everyday cooking for, you know, what we're going to eat for dinner. Mm -hmm. and so you cook what you got. So, 
substituting, even spices. Now, I won't put any more patties, no hot sauce, zero, until this recipe cooks for several hours. Mm -hmm. And then, if it tastes good, uh, and don't uh, get your honey or a neighbor or something. Well, don't get the neighbors because then it'll be over. But get a couple of people to taste it. What do you think? You need salt, it's bland. Uh, I, I find that's better than just me doing it. Mm -hmm. Well, that's about it, unless you want to know what Washington did uh, in the revolution. <laughs> Actually, the first two and a half years, he lost every battle he went into, so not necessarily a good military record there. <laughs> well, I, I want to congratulate Cindy for not asking you for the low cholesterol vegan <laughs> version. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Some things you just don't mess with. <laughs> no, no I, I didn't hear that one. I said some things you just don't mess with. No, well, that's right. That's actually right. That's right. <clears throat> like we, chili. We talked about yeah, earlier, uh, Kip and I about bread pudding and, you know, I mean, steel bread with a bunch of brown sugar on it and bourbon, that's pretty hard to beat. I mean, mm -hmm. you could do that with bananas and then they call it bananas foster. Mm -hmm. uh, you could do it with apples and it would be apple foster. But, you know, I mean, you put enough bourbon and sugar on something, I might be able to eat cauliflower. <laughs> so, in, unless there's any other questions, uh, I have to go uh, do, do my work here in Jim's kitchen, and then I have to move the boat this afternoon. Thank you so very, very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Very Thank welcome. You. And Enjoyed. You, you can see all of my other recipes on the church internet, and hopefully we're getting donations. Uh, <laughs> the only donation offer I've had so far is don't do any more cooking shows, but I don't know. So <laughs> we'll just have to see. Well, we love it. Thanks so much. As always, a pleasure and very, very entertaining. Absolutely. Well, that, that's what we're, we're trying to do. Even if the food, you, well, you sit through a you know, 45 minutes of this, and you don't get anything to eat. <laughs> so you got to go home with a little entertainment, some history, and go. Enjoyed it. Hey, thank bye. you. Hey, it was great. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye. Thank you.